Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm answering question number seven from the specimen paper of the Cambridge International A Level 9709 syllabus. This is Pure Mathematics P1, paper one, and this is um, the AS paper, um, the pure paper for AS. Now, the question here is about trig identities and equations. So part A is about trig identities. It says show that the equation 1 plus sine x times tan x equals 5 cosine x can be expressed as 6 cosine squared x minus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Obviously getting this ready to be solved, which will probably be part B. Now, for this topic, we have to know the identities okay, for the, the trig identities and the two basic trig identities, which in the Cambridge syllabus, you'll find in the formula sheet. Okay, you can see this formula sheet over here. Um, you have, you know, all of these identities given to you. Now, in the Excel syllabus, you don't have all of these given to you. You won't have tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta, nor, the, nor you'll have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, nor will you have... 1 plus tan squared equals secant squared theta, which you don't have to worry about right now in your syllabus. Um, none of these you have to worry about, really, even these double angle formula. N none of these formula are given to you. Okay, the only ones that are given to you from here would be these three in the syllabus for um, at Excel. Everything else won't be given to you yet. You're expected to, to know the rest of them by basically using these two to derive them. These two can be used to derive most of these others, and these two formulas can be used to derive these double angle formula. But you don't have to worry about that right now if you're taking just P1. The only things you're concerned with are basically these first two. Okay, this one and this one. These are the only two formulas that we really need in P1. The rest of them we don't need at all. Okay, that's for P3. So all we need are these two, and you don't have to actually know them, okay? You don't have to actually know them. Okay, so these, as I said, are already given to us. We don't have to actually know these identities at all in terms of memorizing them. We have to know how to use them, all right? In Excel, you would know you'd have to memorize these identities, although after using them for a little while, they'll be in your head anyway. Okay, so tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta and cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. These two identities are very important. So the tan of any angle is exactly identical to the sine of that same angle divided by the cosine of that same angle. And the cosine squared of an angle, which means basically the cosine of an angle and that whole thing squared, plus sine squared theta. So that's like the sine of that angle and then squared will always give you one. So if you find the cosine of an angle and square the answer, and you find the sine of the same angle and you square the answer, they will always add up to one. Okay, that's uh, one very important, very, very important identity. These two identities are necessary for us to know how to apply in uh, P1, all right? So I'm going to apply these to change this equation 1 plus sine x times tan x equals 5 times cosine x, such that it looks like this equation here. Now, in these type of questions, sometimes you cannot see every step of your answer from the beginning. Okay, you cannot see how you're going to get to the answer that you need from the beginning. And you just have to just take, take it step by step, starting off with basically, you know, sometimes the only thing you can do. Now, for me, what I can see here, the only thing I can do here really is just replace the tan x with sine x over cosine x. The tan of an angle is the sine of the same angle over the cosine of the same angle. So I can write this as 1 plus sine x times, and I'm going to write this as sine x divided by cosine x. And that's, as we can see, equals 5 cosine x. Now what I can do is I can multiply. So this basically gives us 1 plus sine x times sine x is sine squared x. As I said, it actually means this. Sine squared x means sine x all squared, but this is how it's written. So 1 plus sine squared x over cosine x equals 5 cosine x. 
Now, what can I do next to make it look like this? Well, what I can do here is I can say, let me get rid of the fraction so that, um, you know, I don't have any fractions in this. So I'm going to multiply every term by cosine x, both sides of the equation by cosine x. Don't forget, the 1 is also multiplied by cosine x. If you multiply this side by cosine x, it's this and that term, both multiplied by cosine x. So this is going to be 1 times cosine x, which is cosine x. Sine squared x over cosine x times cosine x. Well, the cosine x will cancel out. So I have sine squared x equals, and this will be 5 times cosine x times another cosine x, which is 5 times cosine squared x. All right, so now it's looking a bit more like we want it. We have an equation. But the thing that's odd here, the thing that we don't need here, is the sine squared x. There's no sine squared x. There's no sine x in here. Here I have cosine x, which is fine. Here I have 5 cosine squared x, which is fine. But here, this sine squared x, I don't want it in my equation. I want to have it in terms of cosine squared x or cosine x. And we can see here, if I take this identity, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, and if I rearrange it to make sine squared theta the subject, then we can say sine squared theta is the same as 1 minus cosine squared of theta. So I can replace the sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x. And then that will get rid of the sine squared x from my equation. So I have cosine x plus, and this will be 1 minus sine, sorry, 1 minus cosine squared x equals 5 cosine squared x. And if I add this to both sides, I've got cosine x plus 1 equals 6 cosine squared x. And I'm almost there. All I have to do now is to express everything on one side of the equation. I'll express, I'll keep 0 on this side because I want this to be positive as we see here. That's 6 cosine x, cosine squared x, sorry. And I'm going to subtract cosine x and 1 from both sides. So I have 6 cosine squared x minus cosine x minus 1. So therefore we can see that we end up with 6 cosine squared x minus cosine x minus 1 equals 0 as required. Okay, this is what we had to show. And we've gone through the steps carefully. So when they tell you show something, you can't just, you know, start off, for example, write this and then put this at the end. You have to show each step very carefully and clearly uh, so the examiner knows exactly how you proceeded to get the answer. Okay, so there we use these two identities to re-express this in the form that they ask us to do so. So that concludes part A of the question. Now for part B. It says, hence, solve the equation 1 plus sine x times tan x equals 5 cosine x for x values between 0 and 180 degrees. Now, if we can see when it says hence, anytime you see hence in the question, very important word, it means using your previous answer. Okay, so let's see what the previous question was. It was exactly the same as this, and we had to show that this becomes this equation here, which will be much easier for us to solve than using this. It's kind of like we've the hence part tells you, basically giving you, you know, the, the work that you have to do to go on to solve the equation. So for us to solve this equation, we have to re-express the equation in this form. This makes it easy for us to solve, right? Because this is basically what you can say, like a type of quadratic equation, because you have 6 times something squared minus the same thing, minus 1. Okay, so this is the square of that thing. So you could say, for example, let b equals cosine x, which means that b squared is cosine squared x. You can make it more look more familiar to you by uh, replacing cosine x with a letter. So this would be then, for, therefore, this would be 6b squared minus b minus 1 equals 0. And we can solve this for b. And then once we finish solving it for b, we can find the value um, of cosine x according to the limits given here. So to solve this, I need to factorize this equation. And I'm going to see if it can be factorized. Can it be factorized? Let's see. I like to use this window method. So I'm going to put 6b squared over here. 
and minus one over there. Two numbers go over here, which multiply to give you six B squared and add to give you minus one. The product is six B squared and the, the, the sum is minus one B. Um, so I think we're gonna have two different signs. So one's gonna be positive, one's gonna be negative. And it looks like it's gonna be three and two. Okay, but the sum is negative, so it's going to be minus 3b and plus 2b. If I multiply them together, I do get six minus 6b squared. And if I add them together, I do get minus 1b. So those are the two numbers. Now I can, for example, here, I can look at these two terms and I can put the common fact of those two terms out here. Common between, between 6b squared and 2b is 2b. And then after I've done that, the rest is very simple. I can just multiply over here, I know that something times something gives me 6b squared, well, 2 times 3 is 6, and b times b is b squared. Something times something gives me plus 2b, well, 2b times plus 1 is 2b, and 3b times something gives me minus 3b, well, that's minus 1. So these are my factors now, 3b plus 1, 3b plus 1 times 2b minus 1, those are my factors, I have factorized it. Okay, so this is a nice visual way of splitting the middle term. It's the same as splitting the middle term, which most of you would be used to. It's basically the same thing. So therefore, I end up with two solutions, B. So remember, if I want to solve this, either 3B plus 1 equals 0, or 2B minus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to say 3B equals minus 1, and B equals minus 1 third. 2B equals 1, and B equals a half. Okay, so those are my two values for B. Now, that's not my answer. A lot of students make a mistake here and they will stop there. No, we have to find what X is. We are the ones that introduced the B there. It's not in the question to make our solving be a bit, look a bit easier. Okay, we don't have to do that. I could have just put, you know, three cosine X plus one and two cosine X minus one when I factorize, but some people like to make it more familiar looking. But now I have to say, okay, I, we said let B equals cosine X. That means cosine X equals negative one third and cosine x equals positive a half and remember we have a range between zero and 180 to solve for in degrees so zero and 180 both of them included okay so that's what i have to solve for so to find the solutions of this part i'll do this one first because it's easier x equals inverse cosine of a half now if you have been doing trigonometry for a while, you'll understand that the cosine, uh, the inverse cosine of a half is 60 degrees. Okay, 60 degrees. And for the cosine curve, it repeats every um, well, 360 degrees, but there's a second main angle, which is found because of the symmetry of the cosine curve, which looks something like this, between zero and 360. The, if that's 60 degrees, there's another angle here, which is going to be because symmetry 360 minus 60, which is 300. Okay, so you've got 360 minus 60, which is 300. Now that 300 is out of our range. Okay, the only angle between 0 and 180, which is up to here, in our range is the 60 degrees. So we've got one of the answers, x equals 60 degrees. And then cosine x equals minus a third. So x equals inverse cosine of minus one third so we have to find what that is so this is not so easy to do in your head so we're going to put inverse cosine of minus one over three and that we have to make sure our calculator is in degree mode which it is as you can see there's a d here so we know that it's in degree mode so when i press equals it's going to give me my answer in degrees which is 109.47 so you have x equals 109.47. Let me just write it to a couple of more decimal places in case. 471, that's fine. Now, the other angle is going to be 360 minus this. So we've found an angle over here now. That's 109.47 where it's, it has a negative value, you see? Now, the other value is also going to be outside of the range. If I do 360 minus this, you can see, if I do 360, minus the answer it gives me something that again is outside of the range because we stop at 180 so we you know we can stop here basically all right the other angle will be 250.528 250.529 when you round it but this is outside of our range so the other angle is 109.5 degrees 
we should round when it's not an exact answer to one decimal place. Angles should always be rounded to one decimal place. Angles in degrees to one decimal place. Um, if they're not exact, this is an exact answer. So I leave it at 60 degrees. This is 109. This rounded to 109.5 to the nearest one decimal place. Um, that's the, the um, what's the word? That that's That's how we have to deal with questions in degrees for rounding the rounding rule for degrees okay if it's not exact in degrees you round to one decimal place as with IGCSE same thing all right unless otherwise stated of course so there's the answer to part b of this question I think that was yeah that's the end of question uh, seven so um, you know here uh, this was um, some understanding here of the symmetry of the cosine curve We'll come to questions later on where we go into a bit more detail. If they had a wider range, when we have dealing with sine and cosine, we also have different rules which we're going to go through. Um, hopefully, as we go through those questions, as we get to them. But this is um, pretty simple. Um, so there we have the answer to this question. Other questions from this particular paper, this specimen paper, can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region at the end of the video. Other questions which deal with trigonometry from P1 of... Uh, Cambridge um, can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch the video here which will tell you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.